After several successful collaborations, NASA and SpaceX are attempting to push the boundaries with a proposed partnership that involves using the Starship spacecraft as a space station. This grand proposal is expected to redefine the standards and change the way human experiments are carried out in space and even beyond. But why is NASA planning to convert a rocket to a space station? And how exactly will it work? Let's find out. Over the last few decades, the human race has continued to aggressively explore space in a bid to unravel new mysteries and find new solutions to some of the challenges we experience above the Kármán line. And as expected, NASA and SpaceX have been at the forefront of these efforts, working together to foster the development of groundbreaking space technologies. The most recent and perhaps most daring of these partnerships is the Collaborations for Commercial Space Capabilities II initiative, CCSC2. Proposed as an initiative to cater to the future commercial and government needs for the benefit of the proposed U.S. commercial low Earth orbit, LEO, economy, and the human race in general. As part of these efforts, the Space Agency is collaborating with SpaceX to develop an integrated LEO architecture. One of the main ideas floated as part of this initiative is the possibility to leverage the various technological products of SpaceX in building this robust architecture. This includes the prospect of using Starship as a transportation medium or as an in-space low-Earth orbit destination that will be supported by different space vehicles like the Falcon Super Heavy and Dragon rocket and the high-speed connectivity of Starlink satellites. According to inside sources, this mobile space hub will offer a range of services such as crew and cargo transportation, communications, as well as operational and ground support. Critically, the Commercial Space Capabilities II initiative isn't just about NASA and SpaceX alone. As a matter of fact, apart from SpaceX, there are seven more reputable American aerospace companies involved in the scheme. They include Blue Origin, Northrop Grumman, Vast Space LCC, Sierra Space, Think Orbital, Special Aerospace Services, and Nanorax. These companies will share a $415 million funding provided by the U.S. government through NASA. As part of the agreement, Northrop Grumman will make available its persistent platform to provide autonomous and robotic capabilities for NASA's commercial science research and manufacturing capabilities in low Earth orbit. Similarly, Sierra Space is expected to partner NASA on the development of a commercial low Earth orbit ecosystem that will create a stable and long-term human presence in the area. This ecosystem will feature a next-generation space transportation system, various in-space infrastructure, and other expandable and customizable space facilities. For its part, Think Orbital is expected to develop the Think Platforms and Contessa to support several activities in low Earth orbit. The Think Platforms is a group of self-assembling, single-launch, large-scale orbital platforms that will facilitate activities such as in-space research, manufacturing, and general astronaut missions. Otherwise known as construction technologies for space applications, Contessa helps to facilitate welding, cutting, and other things in space. Meanwhile, VAST is working with NASA to design technologies that will support the operation of astronauts in microgravity. As part of its responsibility, the company will build two main artificial gravity stations called Haven-1 and Vast-1. Haven-1 will serve as a commercial microgravity environment where astronauts can conduct research, while Vast-1 will be an in-space platform where manufacturing works can be done. But critically, the proposal to use Starship as a low-Earth orbit destination seems to be the biggest of the lot. You see, the SpaceX Starship is a monstrous space vehicle. Literally, everything about it is screaming big. This super advanced rocket is made of two parts. The first stage, which most people know as the Super Heavy, and the rocket itself. According to the fact sheet, the Super Heavy section alone is around 230 feet tall. This is equivalent to the height of a tower of 23 African elephants. The upper stage where the rocket itself is about 164 feet tall, meaning that when all the stages of this fascinating spacecraft are fully assembled, the height of the rocket increases to around 394 feet. This is slightly taller than the Statue of Liberty or about the same size as a tower of 39 African elephants. Additionally, the rocket is powered by 33 truck-sized Raptor engines as against the five-engine Saturn V spacecraft and the six-engine SLS rocket. So despite having a liftoff mass of 11 million pounds or 5,000 metric tons, the Starship rocket is able to crank out up to 7.6 million pounds of thrust. That's almost twice as much power as the SLS engines generate on average. This is quite astonishing. 
especially when you consider that the highly revered International Space Station has a mass of just under 1 million pounds. And that's not all. According to unconfirmed reports, the Starship rocket has more volume than the ISS. This is actually shocking because one would have imagined that the ISS, which is the primary habitat of astronauts in space, would have more volume than a typical spacecraft. But that's not the case. According to SpaceX, the Starship rocket is big and sturdy enough to accommodate up to 100 people or carry 100 tons of cargo. And perhaps more importantly, the spacecraft will have on-orbit refueling capabilities, which means that it can be refueled in low Earth orbit by a tanker spacecraft. However, the big question on everyone's lips is how NASA and SpaceX plan to convert this groundbreaking rocket to a space station. Well, currently the final blueprint is not readily available. But we know well enough that considering the amenities that must be installed, it would be practically impossible to house 100 astronauts in a Starship in Space Hub. So we estimated that the facility would be able to accommodate at least between 10 and 20 researchers at every given time. This would be a significant upgrade on the ISS, which can only accommodate six astronauts at a go. Beyond the increased human and cargo capacity, the Starship rocket is also easier to build. According to SpaceX, a significant part of the Starship spacecraft is made from 301 stainless steel, which means that it is easier to cut, weld, and modify. More importantly, Starship is a much cheaper option. For instance, as of 2010, the total amount spent on the ISS was estimated to be around $150 billion, making it the most expensive space project in history. On top of that, NASA spends around $3 billion every year to maintain the ISS. In comparison, the entire developmental cost of the Starship project is between $3 and $10 billion, while the cost of a single Starship rocket is roughly $100 million. So if the vision to use Starship as an in-space destination becomes a reality, it means we'll be able to accommodate more astronauts in space for an incredibly discount price. And it's a win-win situation for all parties involved. On one hand, NASA would be able to save a large chunk of its budget for the ISS. This money can be reinvested in other projects for the betterment of humanity. And of course, you can imagine that SpaceX and every other company involved in this grand collaboration will gain some technical expertise and tons of useful data from NASA as well. Highlighting the benefits of the collaboration, Phil McAllister, the Director of Commercial Spaceflight at NASA Headquarters, confirmed that the companies will be able to leverage NASA's vast knowledge and experience, while the agency itself will become a customer for the capabilities included in the agreements in the future. In addition, Phil McAllister believes these agreements will foster more competition for services and more providers for innovative space capabilities. In other words, the fierce competition will push all the companies involved to deliver their best work, meaning that NASA and other potential customers will have enough options to choose from. More importantly, the products that will be designed as part of this collaboration, especially the Starship, will lower the entry level for countries and private individuals looking to explore outer space. But for now, the entire space industry is waiting on SpaceX to complete Starship's first successful launch. Earlier this year, the American company attempted to launch an unmanned Starship rocket. However, the gigantic space vehicle ended in a ball of flames even before it crossed the Kármán line. Not much has been made of the failed launch attempt, though. In fact, rather than condemn the failure, most industry experts have reacted positively to the incident. Reacting to the failed launch, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson made an interesting comment on Twitter saying, Congrats to SpaceX on Starship's first integrated flight test. Every great achievement throughout history has demanded some level of calculated risk, because with great risk comes great reward. Looking forward to all that SpaceX learns, to the next flight test, and beyond. Elon Musk also put out a similar tweet saying, Congrats SpaceX team on an exciting test launch of Starship. Learned a lot for it the next test launch in a few months. Like Bill Nelson, Elon Musk, and other industry experts, we're hopeful that subsequent launches will be successful, and someday soon. Astronauts will be able to perform experiments on the Starship in space destination sometime soon.